Okay, so today we're gonna to be building a semantic layer for Snowflake and then consuming it with our BI tools. So here we are in Design Center where we're actually gonna define or create our semantic layer on our raw Snowflake data. So let's go ahead and create a new model and we're gonna call it Sales. And now we're gonna access, access Sales and go to our Design Center canvas and integrate our raw data that's in Snowflake so we can build a model, a semantic model, that's consumable by anyone in the organization. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna pull down our data sources uh, from Snowflake. I happen to have uh, data in a sample data database in Snowflake. So I'll go and pull that, and I'm gonna look for some sales data. So here I have my sales log from my web store. And I'm going to drag that onto my canvas so that I can actually model it and define my semantic layer. So the first thing you'll notice is that this data is from Snowflake. And you can see all my fields are represented here without any, any work to have to be done by the modeler. I can also double click on that sales log file or table and actually wrangle it. So things like I can correct um, bad data like my sales reasons has a bunch of nulls and I can correct that right in place. So I can, for example, replace my nulls with an unknown tag. And just like that, I can correct my data and I can use that directly in my semantic layer. I can also create calculations. So by, by clicking on my hamburger menu, I can create, for example, a sales tax calculation. And by typing in sales amount, that scale is helping me write this formula. I can actually just multiply it times eight and a half percent and uh, and click my test syntax. Um, and now by saving that, I now have a new calculation for sales tax, again, that I can use in my semantic layer. And there you go. Now all that is being done one time in one place and I can reuse all these calculations across different models. So let's go ahead and let's, let's actually start to create our semantic layer now. I just added my sales tax, so I'm gonna drag that in to my pan, into my measures panel and I'm gonna actually put that into a folder called sales metrics. So I now have my very first metric in my semantic layer. And you can see that there is the folder for sales metrics and there's my sales tax. This is the semantic layer that will appear in the BI tools. So it's very easy to access versus what you see here with a raw table. Let's go ahead and let's add some more metrics. We're definitely gonna wanna report on the amount of orders and the amount of uh, each item that we have in our orders. So I'll, I'll add order quantity. And we're also gonna to wanna to be able to measure how much people are buying in each order. So I'll add sales amount. So now we have our three sales amount, sales metrics um, measures. So let's go and add some dimensions so that we can do group buys and pivots and, um, and cross tabs. So the way we can do that is that we can go to our library. In our library, we have uh, different data sets which is what you see here on my sales log, on my canvas, and also different dimensions. So the power of dimensional modeling and creating the semantic layer is that we have the concept of conform dimensions. So I can drag in, for example, my date dimension. Uh, I can drag in my product dimension and my customer dimension. And then all I need to do to make these usable is to connect up my dimensional data which has been defined and in my library and with uh, and attach it to my raw data in my sales log table in Snowflake. The way I do that is I can just connect up my customer key, for example, to my customer dimension. Now watch what happens. You can see I got all this rich metadata just by making that one relationship. And that includes two different hierarchies for my geography and where my customers live. City rolling to state and to country. So how did I get all that, that, all that metadata for free just by connecting up that, that line? Well, if I double click on my customer dimension, what I can see 
is that I have a customer dimension that's been defined um, with the customer table from Snowflake, along with two other embedded dimensions, a gender dimension, as well as a geography dimension. So I can continue to peel the onion here. And in this case, I'm looking at my geography dimension, which is made up of four different Snowflake tables. So you can see that for my main canvas, we've really made it easier for the modeler to create and, and, and get the same models built with rich metadata without doing a bunch of rework. So I can do the same thing with my product dimension. And now you can see I've inherited that product hierarchy just by creating that relationship. And dates are even better. I can connect up my order dates as well as my shipping dates just by connect, creating these relationships and by using a prefix. So now I have date attributes in my folders with order dates as well as ship dates. And all those hierarchies all come for free. No setup required. And then when we have data that's nested, data that's in JSON or in nested table fields, that happens a lot in Snowflake. You can see I have my product info field with size, weight, style, and color. And these are key value pairs. Well, AdScale understands that. So just by clicking on that product info field, I can, for example, say, um, show me uh, color of product and size. And that will create virtual columns in that scale. So now I can create dimensions on color and size just by dragging them over. And that scale will take care of all that field unpacking. So I have a pretty good uh, virtual uh, model here. And now I'm ready to publish it. So by publishing this virtual model, this will make this model accessible by my consumers. That could be, of course, my business intelligence users with their BI tools, as well as my data scientists with their Python um, libraries and Jupyter notebooks. So there we have our sales uh, virtual model that we just published, and now we're ready to consume it with our BI tools. Okay, now that we've defined our semantic layer in at scale, let's now consume it with our BI tools. And let's start with Tableau. So just by clicking on that icon, I can now log in to my semantic layer directly from Tableau. So now this is a live connection. This is not a, an import or a data extract. So what we see here is we see all the metadata that we just defined in Design Center in just a few minutes. You, know, you can see here's our order of quantity, sales amount, and that sales tax. Remember that was a calculation. You can see our product hierarchies and our, our, our product hierarchies here. There we go as well as all that rich date, uh, date metadata with all that data arithmetic that, um, and time intelligence built in. So by running queries, all I need to do is of course, just click on that metadata. And all of a sudden, I'm now running live queries uh, against my Snowflake cluster. So nothing to do other than for an end user, other than to click on the very user-friendly metadata that has been defined in my semantic layer. Of course, and remember, I also had uh, my, my color attribute. Remember, that was a key value pair in a nested field. So just like that, I now have, I can now report on my products by color in a nested field. No data engineering required. And also remember, I also had uh, all my date hierarchies. So now I can take my order dates, for example, starting with the year and then drill down and keep my, my, my latest year, and I can do a drill down. So in the BI tools, I now have full drill down and pivot capabilities without having to do any kind of data imports or any kind of data extracts. This data is live, which means any updates to the data will be reflected immediately. Okay, so now that we defined our semantic layer, let's explore the raw data uh, using the semantic layer with our BI tools. And let's start with Power BI. So I'm now in my Windows environment and I'm logged in 
to my um, Active Directory. So, uh, so I'm going to log in with uh, in Power BI and get access to my data using that semantic layer. But before I do that, let's just take a look at what the experience would look like without a semantic layer. So I'm going to go ahead and connect, and I'm going to connect straight to Snowflake in this case. So I'm going to click on that more, and I'm going to use the Snowflake driver to connect directly using Power BI. So what do I do? I select Snowflake there, and what's going to do is it's going to pop up this information. So I'm going to have to know what my Snowflake server is. I'm also going to have to de define um, the, the Snowflake virtual warehouse. Now that's pretty scary since that choice and any kind of time that I save this workbook and the, the results in this workbook, that warehouse is going to be used, which is a little bit scary for, for an admin or someone who's trying to control the cost of Snowflake. Also, what you'll notice is that we'll be, uh, by default, the data connectivity mode is to import data. That would be importing data directly into Snowflake, which means I have a copy of the data and not a live connection. I can also do a direct query, but the performance is much slower and much and 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 not nearly as snappy for users. So that's why the default is on import. Also, if I click through here, it's going to ask me for my Snowflake database credentials. That means anybody who wants to explore data is going to have to have a separate Snowflake account. Um, as opposed to uh, which is which is tough to which is tough to control require, requires a lot of admin on the behalf of 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 uh, of your your data platform owner. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to connect directly using the analysis services driver to the at scale semantic layer. Now the beauty of this is that I can simply access the at scale instance. And you can notice that it, the default is to connect live. So that's really nice because now if I connect live, you can see here's my, my, my sales uh, insights snowflake. And you can see there's my sales virtual model that I just defined. And just by selecting that, I get instantly access to all that metadata that I just defined in my uh, design center model. So here's all of my metrics along with um, there's my sales metrics remember my sales amount my sales tax and order quantity and what's even nicer is if you look at my model here in the model screen what you'll notice is that there's all my model that comes for free so that same design center model that i defined and published in design center can now be consumed without bi users in power bi having to redefine that model that means we're going to have consistency um, and uh, consistency in results, and we're going to make it much easier for users to start to uh, create their visualizations. So I can do, for example, my order quantity. Remember, I had my my color my color um, attribute that again was a nested field. Uh, so just by doing that, I now have uh, I now have my um, I now have my first report in Power BI, and it's all governed and all very fast and all with direct query, live queries against Snowflake. And of course, that means I can do things like filtering as well as drill down um, anytime I want to uh, to get to different levels of detail. So so that's my uh, that's my uh, uh, experience with uh, Power BI. Um, again, no extra modeling required. You get data that's analytics ready, and you get data that's friendly, and everything has hierarchies um, just the way you'd like to use them. Okay, so now we defined our semantic layer in at scale, and we created our sales model. Let's go and explore that, and let's start with Microsoft Excel most popular BI tool on the planet. Now you see me in my Microsoft Excel environment, and I'm logged into my Active Directory uh, uh, directory service in my Windows environment. So the way I can access that virtual uh, model in at scale, that semantic layer, is all I need to do in Excel 
is use its built-in capabilities. There's no client-side installed drivers here because I can use the built-in analysis services connector with Excel. I can also use Windows authentication and automatically I'm gonna see just the data I meant to see. So there's my sales model that I just defined in at scale and it's now ready to create a pivot report on it. So here we go with all the metadata that you just saw in the semantic layer defined in at scale is now available directly with Excel. So now I can do my order quantity by color. And just like that, I now have access to all that data through Snowflake in Excel with a live direct query. No data copies, no data imports. And I can also drill through. So if I want to see, for example, if I want to see everybody who's drilled, who has bought in blue uh, items, I can do so and drill through all the way to the detail because I haven't pre-aggregated data.